from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering SAP Sapphire Now 2018. Brought to you by NetApp. Welcome, you're watching theCUBE on the ground at SAP Sapphire Now. I'm your host, Keith Townsend. We're in steamy Orlando. Great convention center, size of 16 American football fields. Got in about 3,000 steps this morning. But you know what, I'm not here to talk about me. We're here to talk about the relationship between Microsoft and NetApp. We have Brad Berkey, GM, SAP Global at Microsoft, and Kevin Zane, Tech Solutions Pro, and this is a mouthful, uh, SAP on Azure, Intelligent Global, and you're a black belt? Yes. Oh, yes, wow. I can kick box. You can, you can, you can, you can kick some <laughs> SAP butt. <so>. Yes, <laughs> no, yes, yes, we do great solutions. So first off, let's talk about the NetApp Microsoft relationship as it pertains to SAP. What's the story behind NetApp and Microsoft? You know, the, the great thing about NetApp and Microsoft is we both have the same vision, right? For us, it's about our responsibility to help our customers innovate. And NetApp is a key partner for us in our ability to help our customers innovate and provide solutions around SAP. So, let's talk about those solutions around SAP. One of the things that is getting pushed an awful lot is that SAP is now cloud ready. We can go to the cloud, we can go to these hyperscalers such as Azure or Azure and swipe a credit card and get up and running with HANA. Tell us about that experience. How, how, how does that go exactly? Kevin? Oh yes, yeah, so we, uh, I don't know if you have heard, we just announced we released a 12 terabyte uh, uh, memory size virtual machine. Our HANA large instances can go up to 24 terabytes. Uh, so we ran the largest uh, SAP workload in the world. Uh, there are so many customers, about 400 uh, SAP on Azure customer. Personally, I work about 30 SAP on HANA, uh, SAP on Azure customers, and uh, over 77 or 80 uh, SAP HANA uh, on Azure customers, so it's a very exciting, and uh, we see that uh, the trend is uh, just picking up, the demand is picking up worldwide. Wow, so 18, uh, Bill McDermott on stage yesterday gave the numbers around uh -huh. SAP HANA in general, 1,800 mm -hmm. customers, so Microsoft having 400 SAP HANA customers. Sure, just to be clear, clear on that, so when we talk about customers that are sitting inside of Azure for their SAP landscape, that's, uh -huh. that's both traditional NetWeaver-based okay. and HANA-based, and yeah, I think the number that you had yeah, is yeah. closer to 70 uh, of, yeah. that, of that larger number. Uh, yeah. the, the real important thing that customers are seeing today is, is the, when people think of cloud, they think about cost reduction, right? right? I'm going to save money because I'm going to be running equipment. The true value is in your ability to be nimble to innovate. Right? So imagine a customer puts their SAP landscape inside of Azure and it's NetWeaver based, say it's the older stuff, right? At any point along that journey, they can call us up and say, I want the infrastructure for HANA. They can innovate at will, right? If they buy hardware that sits on premise, that hardware's set to run that particular landscape. It's not set to run HANA. So there's some opportunities for the customer to innovate using Azure. It's not just cost savings. It's around efficiencies and the ability to innovate at will. So let's talk about hybrid cloud scenarios around that very concept. We had another NetApp partner on that talked about the scenario in which customers have this desire to innovate quickly. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, in a traditional enterprise, to your point, if I wanted to spin up a HANA workload, I'd have to procure hardware, I'd have to get my basis team to lay down the NetWeaver stack along, along with uh, HANA. It could be a couple of months before I'm up and running then I could innovate, do my innovation. How does Microsoft help shorten that cycle? I can, I can speak to, uh, to it. We actually have another partner here demo that as well, Suzy, and we, uh, HANA is around Suzy Red Hat and, and the different flavors of Linux, and they running on Azure. Today, we are able to deploy the entire SAP landscape use the automated scripts inside Azure. In 30 minutes, you have the entire SAP landscape deployed, including 
the large virtual machine M series for your HANA cluster, and you also have uh, the ASCS, the central instances, and also the NFS uh, cluster, as well as your application servers. All those things running in automation in a cloud speed, in 30 minutes instead of three months. So one of the obvious advantages of cloud in general is this ability to get to agility. Mm -hmm. There's a concept that once I've innovated in the cloud, I know what the workload is, it's stable, it's not changing, that I bring that back in-house. Is that something that you're seeing or are people continuing to run these workloads steady state in the cloud as well? I think they're going to run, run more so in steady state. We don't see them uh, kind of moving them back. The idea that uh, in a traditional SAP landscape is that everything is always on, right? right? And since the lights are always on, why don't I have my own equipment as opposed to renting just compute from a hyperscaler like Microsoft? And the reality is, is again, back to that notion of innovating. If I'm going to roll out, let's say, S4 on top of HANA, so you think about suite on HANA and then S4, I'm going to set up all of these test environments, right? multiple test environments, versions of it as I roll out. I'm going to be really big for a short period of time, then I'm going to roll it out and shrink back down. Also when I do upgrades, you think about it like um, if you're doing payroll at the end of the month, right. I'm going to be big for short periods of time. So we call that bursting. And it's that bursting, right, that allows you to continually to reduce costs you wouldn't bring back on-prem, where you can't burst, right? Make sense? That makes sense. So let's talk about some of these business conversations that you've had with customers what have been some of the primary drivers other than, obvious, other than the obvious agility? What are some of the conversations that you look at the broader Microsoft portfolio of solutions that you're able to have, bring into customer conversations? Well, two things come to mind, one of which is when you think about enterprise class security across all domains, right? So right now we provide Azure for Office 365. That's an Azure tenant, right? And we can give you advanced security for that. Imagine that I can provide that same security for your SAP system. And I want to give you an example of the type of security solutions. We have an intelligent um, IoT-based um, a security model that sits inside of Azure that will predict hacks, right? They'll look at your environment and say, you look just like a customer who has been hacked, or you have the attributes of a customer who could get hacked, and they'll proactively come in and say, you need to make these adjustments. That kind of stuff sits inside of the cloud in Azure. So it's not just, again, I think the misnomer is it's just about cost savings, right? Because if it was just about cost savings, then at some point, your depreciation models for on-premise hardware, as long as you can stay and not change, so not changing would save you a lot of money. Right. So that's why I get back to, it allows you to change without burden of impact. So, talking about change in the industry, we can't have a $7.5 billion acquisition and not talk about it on theCUBE. We kind of eat this stuff up. Yeah. You guys acquired GitHub. Let's talk about the relationship of developers. One of the things that I haven't heard a lot, at least in conversations I've had on theCUBE so far this week, have been about the developer. Talk, talk about the importance of the developer relationship and potential integrations with GitHub, if you can, uh, and SAP. Oh, I, that's, a, that's one of the favorite topic I have. I, I, I came from a DevOps background, cloud enable the agility, allow you to run the uh, continuous de development and continuous integration, and the GitHub has been an integrated part of a Microsoft solution already, and uh, we are probably the largest contributor in the GitHub, and uh, before Google and uh, Facebook, if you rank in based on the history. Now we, uh, the open source has been a, a cultural, uh, after the side uh, take over SEO, has been a, our, we embrace open source, and we actually, majority of our what code right now deployment is in the GitHub and uh, uh, in SAP workload world, we the ARM templates for automation templates, JSON templates, and all the automation scripts we deploy it in the GitHub and we share with customer as a community, and they actually use those scripts to their deployment, continue, continue, continuously improve the uh, scripts for automation. So. Continuous integration, continuous development is not a term that we hear a lot in the SAP world. As we're bringing these concepts from, I think, thought into reality with services such as GitHub to Thor, Thor Store, DevOps uh, scripts, uh, automation scripts, what has been the business impact of being able to bring a continuous integration, continuous development, 
practice to SAP, which I, is I usually you, not big. I'll give you a good example. For example, when Brad Berkey <laughs> mentioned earlier, during the, uh, during the SAP landscape deployment, you have end process and deployment, you want to do a test environment, you want to do a sandbox, troubleshooting things. Today, with the scripts automation, you can spin up an entire system in three hours, four hours, including S4, including the demo system, including the, uh, the business objects, BI, and all the things together. You can test this and then shut down the entire system and delay the, the resource group inside Azure and then remove the system. They re-spin up and as necessary. Also, in the uh, we're working with SAP uh, called the uh, uh, Landscape Manager, which allows mm -hmm. you to cloning the system inside Azure. And the, the, the scripts behind it is actually is a, a, a continuous integration into uh, the development type of scripts allow you to replicate system fast, re uh, allow you to deploy another testing system or training system. Uh, is uh, give you open up a lot of a lot of modern uh, de 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 deployment methodology to uh, to give you fast agility to the business. So Microsoft, the ultimate platform company, mm -hmm. the one of the things that designates a platform company is that your partners basically make more money than you off the platform. Windows is a great example mm -hmm. of a platform. So you have platform, Azure is definitely becoming known as a platform. Mm -hmm. And then we have NetApp, the data-driven company. Mm -hmm. Talk through the value of the NetApp data fabric, data-driven uh, technology and platform as it pertains to the ability to have the same data operation strategy on-prem and in the Microsoft Cloud. Okay, uh, and I'll give you an example. Is uh, a lot of our customer, uh, Brad sells a lot of uh, NCP on Edge to many customers <laughs> and supporting those customers. Many of them, uh, um, because NetApp has a super, very high speed uh, file system management, uh, snapshot management, uh, to uh, data protection, and data recovery and backup, and also the DR capability. We, we customer demand us, so can we actually work with Microsoft in the cloud to use a similar technology? So they deploy the NetApp in on tap inside Azure today. And we're able to support uh, AFS file services, do file sync from on-prem to the cloud, from one Azure region to another region, leverage those on uh, uh snap mirroring, and uh, other technology as well. So we, to enable, provide enterprise level uh, uh, file sync, file protection, file recovery, and uh, uh, volume replication as well. So you guys are pretty good. I'm trying to throw you curveballs, but you're, you're, you're pretty much knocking them out the park. So I'm trying to throw another curveball. Bring the hybrid IT story in for me from a Microsoft perspective when it comes to Azure Stack. How does Azure Stack play a role in the overall vision, whether it's Edge, Core, or, or the extension into the cloud? How, how does Azure Stack play a role in it? Yeah, okay. It's not for SAP, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, okay. Azure uh, Stack is a very important uh, uh, view, overall view from Edge to the uh, intelligent cloud, and uh, well, not uh, we we have the uh, 50 regions globally. We have uh, many data center combined in the, the largest uh, public cloud from region perspective. But still, there are areas, for example, like a cruise ship, and uh, like a defense department. They may actually require a, a sm uh, Azure inside a, a, a prime type of. Uh, uh, technology stack. Azure Stack allow you to do it, use the same interface, same view to deploy the technology. When you actually connect it, they can synchronize in the, your your subscription. So it give allow you to have end-to-end uh, -end access from the, your on-premise into the cloud. And Microsoft has the perfect uh, hybrid cloud strategy here, and it allow you to do not only the IS and PaaS and also the SaaS solution to our customers. So okay, let's bring the conversation back up a couple of levels and mm -hmm. talk, Brad, what have been the conversations here after the keynote this morning, talking about the intelligent uh, business, the conversations yesterday with Bill McDermott with the super high energy about SAP going into CRM, what has been the conversations with customers? 
certainly we've had a, a privilege for a lot of customer meetings while we've been here. I mean, these are very big. I mean, the great thing about SAP Sapphire is you get about 20,000 uh, customer attendees here, right? And 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 they're the they're the big ones. And at the C-suite, so we get to have some great uh, conversations. The customer conversations have been around the notion of the responsibility that Microsoft and SAP have to them, right? To the point where I was speaking with a customer early, and he says, "I, you, you have an accountability to help me be innovative, right? And that's a very important responsibility. A lot of that revolves around enterprise class security, right? A lot of that revolves around uptime, right? And latencies between those environments. How, what's my performance attribute? And are you going to be there with me forever, right? Now, when a customer chooses um, um, Azure and they choose S or they choose SAP and they choose Azure Port for certainly. It's really a three-part uh, partnership. The partner, or the customer, Microsoft, and SAP is a partnership, right? And if I have to add a fourth one to that, it would be the systems integrator, right? Because in the case, Microsoft doesn't upgrade, migrate, move, or install anything. So we right. rely on all the many partners that are here, right, to do that set of work. Everywhere from Accenture to um, Capgemini to uh, Brave New World, right? That was ABC, right? I got those out, right? All of those partners are very key to both Microsoft and SAP to ensure customer success. So a lot of the meetings that we've had here have been with those partners and those customers. Well, to be a fly on the wall for those, I would love to go into more detail. We're running out, we've run out of time, I'm getting the rap sign, but I would love to have a conversation around support, uh, integration, way more areas than we have time for. We'll have to get you on the Cube again. You're now Cube veterans. From Orlando, this is Keith Townsend for the Cube. Stay tuned or stay in the YouTube feed to find out more about what's going on about SAP Sapphire now on the ground. Talk to you soon.